Hey crypto. Hey crypto. Hi, and welcome back to the third episode of Cake Crypto. My name is Monica, and I'm the co-host. And I'm Peter Chung. So today's topic is the 2020 revision of the national tax code that was announced in July. So there's some elements uh, in this revision that could have significant impact on how non-Koreans trade and transact on Korean exchanges. Peter, can you give me some more information about what's going on? Sure. So maybe I want to step back a little bit mm -hmm. and then explain how the authority has been viewing this asset class uh, in terms of uh, you know, imposing tax obligations. So as is the case with many other countries, there was no legal base in terms of how to treat crypto as a, as a taxable asset. Sure. But then the change in uh, May 2018 when the Korean Supreme Court gave out a ruling that uh, Bitcoin uh, is an asset with economic value. So that, for the first time, provided a legal basis to treat crypto asset as uh, something taxable. And then came the uh, amendment to the uh, Specific Financial uh, Transaction Act, which we talked about in the second episode. Right. And in that uh, amendment, it specified how crypto exchanges should help tax authority administer the tax obligations. And right. then came the revision, 2020 revision of a tax code in July this year. In that revision, for the first time, the government specified how are they going to treat the crypto assets as a taxable asset. Right, so early adopters, they didn't have to pay any tax. That's correct, mm. yeah. So um, if, I, if I were to go into a little bit detail right. on this, uh, maybe uh, I can explain this with using this table. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you're a resident, uh, what you're going to be taxed is uh, income generated from a transfer or leasing of the asset. Mm. Uh, and then here the word uh, transfer is a broad term that includes sale as well as inheriting or just giving away as a gift and then uh, it's going to be taxed as by uh, each individual's filing annual income tax report which in the case of Korea happens in May uh, every year and then you will get the uh, tax invoice from the government and we will make a payment sometime in July and August so here basically it's the resident that has to write, write a check based on the invoice you get from the government mm -hmm. and then the tax liability is calculated based on 20% tax rate so you apply 20% tax rate to the income you generated from the transfer of the asset mm -hmm. now if you're a non-resident it's slightly different now you're gonna be taxed on income generated from a transfer of the asset so that part is the same as a resident uh, but what's different here is uh, they would include the withdrawal as part of of, uh, of the income generation. Now the reason for that is because in case of a non-resident there is always a risk of uh, running away without paying the tax in the eyes of a tax authority. Mm -hmm. So they want to include withdrawal as part of a definition of income generation. So withdrawal would be moving it from a Korean exchange to uh, an international exchange. Yes that's right yeah and then uh, this will be taxed as, uh, as a withholding tax so basically Whoever is custodying your asset, when you are transferring your asset out, the service provider will withhold part of the proceeds as a as a withholding tax, mm. and then distribute the rest to you as the as the proceeds. Uh, so basically, the entity that will deliver tax to the government is not non-residents, but it'll be the service provider that has with, withhold it part of your proceeds. From. Right, so at least it's kind of convenient in that way. That's right, yeah, from the eye, in, from the perspective of a non-resident, it's convenient because yeah. you don't have to deal with But it. I'm not sure if it's that great of a deal exactly. for the non-resident. Exactly, and right. the reason for that is because you're basically getting taxed on the total proceeds depending on the situation. Mm. Um, so basically the tax liability will be calculated based on the minimum of 20% of the income that you generated mm. from a transfer of the asset or 10% of the total proceeds, whichever is lower. So um, in a lot of cases, I think the exchanges will have, will prefer to tax based on 10% of the total proceeds rather than 20% of the income because it'll be very difficult to prove your income if you have transferred in the asset from overseas ex uh, exchanges. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, so it'll be, exchanges will have a, will be responsible for meeting these uh, tax rules. Mm. So uh, the exchanges will have to decide how they want to 
fulfill their obligations. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a balance act between how you want to fulfill your obligations as a license exchange versus how you want to service your non-resident customers. Right. So each exchange will have to kind of redesign how they provide a service for the non-residents. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Corbett will may come up with a different uh, service standards compared to let's say Bitfilm or Upbit or mm -hmm. other exchanges. So I was wondering is it that's why some of the exchanges have global exchanges and Korean exchanges? I think the, that's slightly different because um, the reason why some exchanges are global exchanges is not just for this reason mm -hmm. but also for a host of other reasons because if you are a global exchange basically you're, you're an offshore entity and therefore you're not subject to any of the uh, Korean tax. That's right, Korean right. tax as well as other types of regulations from Korea. Right. So so the global exchanges are there for various other reasons, not just for the tax reasons. Mm -hmm. Right, so is there anything else that we should look out for? Yeah, so um, there's going to be some additional fine-tuning mm -hmm. uh, to this law, uh, because the way that the Korean law works is that uh, they will pass the law first and then come up with an executive ordinance specifying exactly how it's going to be implemented. Mm -hmm as well as reflecting some fine-tuning as well, if it's necessary. So that's expected sometime in December or January. Mm. So uh, I think we should do, keep an eye on, on for more, more updates. From, Absolutely. From so you said it was announced in July with more information coming pretty soon. Mm -hmm. But when does it actually come into act? Yeah, so this was announced in, in July this year. It won't go into effect until October 1st, 2021. All right. So you still have plenty of time to react and prepare for this. I gotcha. Um, uh, there's plenty of more to talk about on this topic. If you like this video, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Hey crypto. Hey crypto.